Hi guys, how are you doing? It's a real pleasure to be here today. I've got another amazing guest. It's my real pleasure to introduce the wonderful Robin Harris. How are you doing, Robin? I'm great, thank you, Stephen. It's great to be here. It's been amazing. You've got a book coming out as well, haven't you? I have, yes. You know, I love the title, by the way. You know, um, uh, Take a Walk on the Wild Side, right? Yes. Well, I've certainly done that a few times. <laughs> It's the... As people will say, yeah. yeah. I can imagine, I bet you have, we know about you, Steve. But um, I think we all do, you know, in this life, you know, to put it mildly. No matter who we are or what walk of life we, we, uh, we come from. That's why I love that title. Tell us a little bit more about the book. The WILD side, the way I use WILD, is an acronym that I've had trademarked. Mm -hmm. And it's a way of looking at life and at the world that is so much more empowering. We're not taught this stuff as we're growing up. Certainly I wasn't taught this stuff at school. What I got, and this may be of my time and where I was living, but was a lot of fear, was a lot of sense of threat out there, sense of life is a competition, life is a test, you could fail. In fact, you most likely will fail and that set me up for failure. So I wanted to turn that around. It's not geared to one specific age group. It's more for the people who find themselves on this journey, wherever they might feel themselves to be, but they're looking for more well-being. They're looking for a way to take back control in their own life, to hold those reins, to know how to respond and take charge to create the life that they know they were born for even if that's only some little flicker some little spark inside and it's like a reference book that you can return to again and again it has exercises in it that are set up to lay those foundations that you were talking about that can then be built upon and it's something that you can go through again and again because although it's a set of steps at each level, you can get more from that step and more. So it's like an iterative process. Uh, and why get it? I think the, what, the times that we're living in right now, so many people are experiencing stress. So many people are experiencing mental health challenges, mental well-being challenges, and feeling isolated. Isolation is a pandemic of our time. So. This book is a companion to support people along that journey. If they're feeling isolated, they're feeling challenged, they're experiencing symptoms of whatever kind, that can be mental, physical, emotional, and it's just there to say, you've got this. We can walk this walk together and you will make difference. You will change your life and it will bring you to greater well-being. Now, I know you've had an amazing journey in healthcare and all that stuff, but you had your own challenges, like with your health and stuff like that. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. When I was 13, I was diagnosed with migraines, and they were constant, they didn't stop. And then when I was about 16, I got glandular fever, and from that I developed chronic fatigue, and then I was diagnosed with ME. And I also developed IBS and later had eczema. So I had quite a little catalogue of things going on. It really was because I had that catalogue of conditions and I wasn't getting the help that I needed, the help that I was looking for. I was miserable and I tried the traditional routes. I went to the doctor and I was put on some medication which didn't work for me. I went to counselling, that didn't work for me and that was of its time, so things are quite different now. But because those didn't work for me and I was desperate, I was at the point where I thought life like this is not worth living. So I went on a journey. I started reading and exploring and seeing what could I do? Was there anything I could do to support myself? Because I was looking for something that would feel empowering. I didn't want to be dependent on more external things for my well-being. What I was looking for was something that would help me to feel I was the one in charge. It's my life. I wanted to be the one in the driver's seat. 
So I went looking to see what I could find. My mum knew of this amazing doctor in, uh, in Belfast, actually. So one time when I was over for a visit, she booked me in for a session with him and he introduced me to energy because although he practiced as a GP, he also knew about a lot of complementary approaches. And this fascinated me, this concept and this idea that energy was mine and I could take those reins and I could navigate that ship myself. So I went on and I did Reiki, I did uh, energy healing, I did emotional freedom technique, tapping and matrix re-imprinting and all of that gave me tools that I could use to support my own well-being. But then I came across meta-consciousness and that was the thing that brought everything together for me, helped me to understand why my body was doing what it was doing. I had got to the point where my body and I did not have a very good relationship. It was a kind of a love-hate relationship. I was pushing against it most of the time. But finding that last key where I could fall in love with my body again and know that it was supporting me always if I could just understand and work with it. And that's now what I'm passionate about sharing with other people who find themselves now where I was then. Having been where I was and then found the key and knowing that it's possible to turn your life literally that difference from dark to light, misery to joy and enjoying every day. I now look around and I see other people where I was. And so my passion is to share with them it is possible to change. No matter what you may have thought, no matter what you may have been taught, you can change and I can help you to find the key for you. So it's really just supporting those people to make that change, to finding how they can do it in their lives. It's so individual because our well-being is individual, where we are is individual, our experience is individual. There is no one size fits all. So I go to the person where they are at and really look into what's going on for them and share with them that their body isn't making a mistake. It's not going wrong. It's not attacking itself. It's making an adaptation, but it's doing that in order for them to survive. If they're feeling threatened, if they're feeling overwhelmed in some way, and we're not always consciously aware of that. It can be a very subconscious thing. So it's bringing that conscious awareness to what's going on, why the body's doing what it's doing, but also how we can then, understanding that, know what we need to put in place to reverse that adaptation, to get back to homeostasis, back to balance. Because when we have that, the body heals itself. The book will be available via Amazon. There's going to be a hard copy. There'll be an ebook, And also in time, there'll be an audio version. Uh, it'll also be listed with Gardner, so it can be stocked in shops. Thanks for all that you're doing out there, you know, and it's been wonderful having you here today on the platform, Robin. It's been fantastic being here, Stephen. And you mentioned before about the work that you do. I certainly feel that your support of me has been very personal, very connected, tailored, and it you just get me and it's wonderful. You get what I do. You really understand it. And you've been doing so much for me. It's I'm really grateful. Oh, I'm very, very grateful to have you, you know, to, um, you know, as I said, and much more to come, you know, and I wish you so much with this wonderful book. I know uh, all the great work you do of healing out there with so many people changing lives. And I know this book is going to be another thing that's really going to push that narrative for you. And it's wonderful to have you on here. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, Stephen.